Senator Bevout, welcome um, to Capital Outlook. We appreciate your time. Good morning. It's great to be here. You've served a quite a long time, um, um, first in the House and now in the Senate. Uh, why did you get involved in, in politics in Wyoming? It's a long and interesting story, and I won't bore you with all the details, but essentially there, is a, there were individuals in, in Riverton and in Fremont County back then. We ran countywide that for whatever reason, thought that I possibly should be in politics and I was a write-in candidate. At that particular time, I, I was a Democrat and other, no particular reason other than my family had been and my, my grandfather and my uncle. And I was a Democrat and back then, you know, Democrats didn't do very well in Fremont County, very Republican County and Scotty Ratliff had been elected. He had been elected for a while. And so they wrote me in with seven votes and I was, had the opportunity to get on the ballot and I thought, you know, maybe I ought to give this a try. And, you know, I've always believed in public service and it's a wonderful thing we do for our country and our state and locally as well, the school board, the city council, county commissioners. And, and you know, you give back to those who give to you, which is called public service. And it, citizen, that's a citizen public service that we do in Wyoming. So I thought, let's, let's give it a try and was fortunate enough to be elected. You also ran for governor, um, Senator, in 2002. Do you often reflect about that time in your life? <laughs> well, yeah, I do reflect about that. It was, a, as they always say when you lose, it was a great experience and all of those, those, uh, those comments we make, it was a great experience and it was a lot of work, uh, a lot of really wonderful people helped me, a lot of wonderful people I got to meet and the voters spoke and, and, and they, they chose the, uh, the other candidate and I was good with that and, and that's what our election is all about and, and people have asked me a lot since then and even recently about further plans politically and and I've got no further plans politically. Uh, I, I made my run for governor and they chose a different candidate. And I've lived with that and moved on. And you moved on and in fact then moved on to serve again. Take us back to a year and a half ago. You um, were battling cancer for a second time and, and your, health, your health was, it wasn't great. How difficult has this process been for you to recover? this second time around in this battle with cancer? Well, no different than many other people, Craig, that this face that uh, cancer. It's, it's, a, it's a tough disease, no question about it. And, and it, it, you know, it's, uh, it affects your family, it affects you personally, and, and how we each deal with it. We deal with it individually and, and how we react to those, that situation. So I'm no different than anyone else that has to deal with it. Uh, we did the best thing we could. We went to the best place to be treated. We knew that it would be a tough deal. And uh, we found the docs and we went through the program and, and fortunately uh, we were able to, to get through it all right. There were some bumps along the road, and, but uh, we thought about what we should do and if we felt good enough to continue to serve the people of Fremont County and the state that we would do it. And I made that decision to stay in. The, the last session as floor leader was, was, a, was a tough session, I'll be real honest with you, for a lot of reasons, but we did fine and we got through it, did a lot of good things for the state of Wyoming and then decided to run for re-election. And move forward, and it would—it was just uh, the way I was raised. You don't—you don't leave a fight when it's getting tough. You know, my grandpa always say, "When the going gets tough, the tough get going." And and I just didn't feel it was appropriate to bail with all these tough decisions and, and uh, issues we have in front of us. So that's why I chose to run for re-election. Senator, what are your priorities outside of budget? What it, what is it that that being president of the Senate? What is it that you really want to? Um, maybe work on more than all of the other issues that are in front of you? Well, the, the, what I've always thought and the best thing about any place in Wyoming particularly is you have to have jobs. Job and a, and a vibrant economy. And, and we've, uh, we've had ups and downs. I lived through the, the downturn of the 80s and 90s in the house. They were very difficult. And I also lived through them as a businessman, trying to support those families that have worked so hard for our companies. and. And you know, we were, we were blowing and going back in the 80s and we had to lay off everybody. The business essentially was over. And in terms of, of the employees we had, at one time we had around 250 employees. I have never forgotten that. And when the, the, the boom came back in, in the 2000s, that first decade, and all along, you know, I, I, in the back of my mind, I remembered the 80s and 90s and a lot of the things we did legislatively that I, that I was very involved in and supported very much was to was to be conservative about our spending, don't grow government, and to save for when the boom busted, and sure enough, it did. And, and so that's no different than the private sector. And without a private sector, a vibrant private sector, and creating good jobs for people in Wyoming, we're in trouble. And we need jobs, we need the economy to, to create these jobs. Minerals is a huge part of it. And we need to have access, 
You know, the, the thing about the, the issue of public lands, it's not about privatizing or selling them. You know, that's totally mis, misconceived and, and misrepresented by a, a constituency out there that's, that's opposed to what we're trying to do. What we want to do is, is have some certainty so people can properly develop our mineral resources on public lands, period. It's not about shutting down hunting or taking away Grand Teton National Park or, or, or ruining the Wind Rivers and being able to, to harvest an elk. It's about properly developing mineral resources. Cuts started to occur in the last two years, Senator. As you look back and the way that, that cuts have been impacting everything from, from state agencies to education to the university to community colleges, any cuts gone too far, in your opinion, where, where you need to look at an agency or to look at um, one segment of, of government and, and say, we need to put the brakes on here because they're not I, able I to think function? I look at, if you look at it from 30,000 feet and in terms of the overall amount, I don't think we have the reductions that we need. I think we need to have more because I think in the governor's budget that he proposed, it's a balanced budget, but he balanced some of it with one-time money. I don't like to do that. I don't run my business based on one-time money. I have to have revenues if I'm going to spend it that I know are ongoing. So in terms of the big picture, we haven't cut enough. In terms of how we've done it, I think you're right. I think there are areas that we probably went too far. Uh, one of them is adult DD waiver. It's a real serious issue. We have a, a, a CES here in Riverton and other, other providers throughout the state that do a great service to Wyoming that are, that are struggling. So in some of those areas like that, in, in the developmentally disabled side of things, we need to take a look at. And, you know, and back to education, when we talk about those reductions, you know, I really thought special ed was really important. I still do. You know, maybe you continue to fund that at 100%, but you roll it in, let the school districts make that, that decision. Transportation, 100%. I don't think we need to reimburse transportation at 100%, but I'd rather have the school board decide how they want to run those buses mm -hmm. rather than, than, than us telling them that. So I think uh, that's how I would answer that. I would also say that, that the community colleges and the university have stepped up and really made the hard choices. Our new president at the, at the university, President Nichols, is doing a great job. I, I think she's, a, she's going to really be what we need. I've met with her. I, I really like her attitude. I like her plan. I like her strategic movement she's doing. And, and I like the community college's attitude about how we move forward. We have a new president at Central. And I think he's going to do a great job for us. Joanne did a wonderful job and got us to where we are. And I think Brad will continue that, that message. But they made the tough choices. And so everybody else should be in the same boat.